So, I promised some people with money that if they gave me some of their money, I would make them a movie about money. This is that film about money. You probably think that this is money and that banks are where your money is stored for safekeeping, guarded in big underground vaults by guys like Gustavo. Well, you're wrong, like really wrong, because it turns out that money is not a thing and banks, in order to be banks, well, they need to be empty. Back in the old days, banks used to look like well-fortified temples. In fact, they were temples. Remember Jesus and the money changers? Nowadays, they've all turned into pharmacies and retail outlets. And actual banks these days now look like airport business class lounges. It's like they've given up even pretending that this is where they store the cash. I wonder why that is. Maybe if we made an awkward educational video on the subject, we could figure that out. So let's ask the question. What happens to your money when you deposit it in a bank? Here, for example, I am going to deposit $100. Thanks, James. Your account has now been credited with $100. You will receive 1% interest, so in a year, your account will have grown to $101. That's amazing, Ridu. But how does that happen? Does my money grow like a yogurt culture down in the vault with all the other money? No, James. That doesn't make any sense. So what happens? It goes like this. If I have $100 of real cash and I put it in a bank, the bank gives me then the right to write checks for $100. But of course, they're not going to sit on that $100 waiting for me to write the checks. They're going to lend it out. Right. They take my money and pay me 1% interest, and then they loan it out to other people and charge them higher interest. And the difference between those two interests is their profit. That makes some sense. So how much of my $100 does the bank get to loan out? And how much does the government require them to keep on reserve in case I need some money? The reserve requirements are very small. You'd be surprised. If you put your money in the bank, you think they hold a lot of it and keep it safe for you. Actually, it, it, it's a very complicated formula, but for most banks, it turns out to be around 3%. So the bank sets aside a tiny fraction of my $100 and then takes the vast majority of the rest of it and as quickly as humanly possible gets rid of it. For example, the bank lends it to Sally on her credit card account so that Sally can, I don't know, go out and buy a, a Snuggie for her dog. So now a new bank account is credited with that money. That means that on top of the $100 that's credited to me and my bank, there's magically lots more dollars showing up in another bank. Sally's credit card debt has strangely created, well, more money. And what does this new bank do? It reserves a tiny fraction of Sally's debt and then lends the vast majority of that, what's left, to Frank, who goes out and buys, I don't know, a baby wall hanger. So now another bank magically has a new deposit it treats as money, even though it is just Frank's borrowed debt. In fact, Frank borrowed that debt from Sally's debt. It's just more debt. And that shows up, amazingly, not only is more debt, but is more money. And the bank that that loan goes into takes that so-called money and uses it to, I don't know, finance a corporate merger or buy repackaged mortgages from another bank. And on and on and on. Money is like a hot potato. Whoever holds it has to pass it on to somebody very quickly. You, I mean, a bank can't keep its money in the bank. They can't pay you interest, however low, without getting some. This is what's known as the fractional banking system. As you can see, every time the banks move the money, their reserves go up a fraction, but the total money supply multiplies a lot. You know, in short, this is not money. Money is not a thing. The basic money is what the government prints and declares it will support. But banks have the capacity to kind of multiply that. Here's the total amount of dollars in the world today. But here, according to the Federal Reserve Bank, is the total amount of money that's in the system. What makes up that huge difference? Well, money is usually, except for cash, money is somebody's debt, somebody's IOU. But I thought money was, you know, money. It turns out money is a mushrooming, mutating pile of debt, of IOUs, of promises, sitting on top of another pile of debt and IOUs and promises. Money is weird because it's the, it's the idea that we have in our heads. We represent it with like physical tokens, but it's really based on this general idea of trust that's sort of captured in a token. In other words, for money to be money, 
We all have to believe. Yes, it's all a system of beliefs and therefore very fragile. There's no way the bank actually has $10,000 for every person that has $10,000. But it doesn't matter because all you need to do is have the belief that there's $10,000 in the bank for you to be like, keep working on your, on your day. And when you do need the $10,000, chances are not everybody else is going to need the $10,000 at the same time. So, I believe money really is holy. It redeems itself. We cover a dollar bill and like pictures of dead presidents we cover, we put in God we trust on it. We have a pyramid with an eye on it. So what happens when somebody not as credit worthy as these guys gums up the works? Things don't have to change very much for the banking system to, to begin to run into trouble. And therein lies a tale to be told.